Hello, I'm Odin, and this time I'm gonna make another prop from one of my favorite Marvel movies. I'm gonna make Grandmaster's Melt Stick from Thor Ragnarok. One of the things I like about this prop is the apparent simplicity of it. I mean, it's a stick with some rings and a ball on top, right? Well, basically, yeah. What I'm gonna start with is a couple pieces of pipe, some one inch PVC pipe and some three inch ABS pipe and a five and a half inch plastic tree ornament. This is a softer plastic, which is good because it won't shatter. Don't need the hanger. I'm gonna fill this with expanding foam, so I tape off the top to keep it clean. And I tape paper over it to protect the rest from any expanding foam drips. I wanna put a one inch wooden dowel inside the ball. I can insert a threaded nut into the wood so the ball can be removed from the rest of the staff. And the foam will hold the wood in place. And I'm gonna be using two part expanding foam. Pour equal amounts of part A and part B, and then use a mixing cup. Stir them together thoroughly, and then pour it pretty quickly. Because in warm weather, the foam will start to expand in under a minute. Now this time of the year, it's a little cooler, and it takes a little longer. I'm using the two part expanding foam for this, because the foam in a can only works when it's exposed to the air. So inside a ball like this, it could take days to set up completely. This stuff will take 30 minutes. I put the wooden dowel into the ball and set some weight on top so the foam doesn't push it all back out. I was amazed at how perfect the amount of foam was. It filled the ball, but it didn't overflow really at all. I'll just set this aside and let it fully cure. The melt stick is six feet tall and it would never fit in a car or a box. But if I make it into four pieces that screw together, it'll transport easily. Next, I'll make the rings. I clamped a piece of wood to the saw so I could cut the rings the same size every time. You need to wait for the blade to stop each time so you don't ruin the little piece of pipe you just cut. And it's for your own safety as well. All total, I cut eight pieces of three inch ABS pipe, three quarters of an inch thick. I sanded all the edges lightly. The compound miter saw always leaves a little tag of plastic on one edge. I didn't turn my belt sander on so I wouldn't ruin the cut corners of the pipe rings. Now, I never really thought about it before, but a ring is just a pipe whose length is less than its width, right? And three inch ABS is still three inches on the inside. To cap the ends, I cut down a piece of Sintra plastic, which is a sheet of foamed PVC. I make some four inch squares and I cut more than I need. And I set a guide on my drill press so I can quickly drill an eighth inch hole in the center of all my four inch squares. Then I can use my circle cutting guide to make three inch circles out of all the four inch squares. I also make a set of two inch Sintra circles. These are more for decoration. And I use some sprinkler pipe glue to glue each set of the circles together. The metal guide post I'm using here is actually a three inch drywall screw that didn't get the screw threads put on it. Back to the drill press with one of the scariest drill tools I have. So I can adjust the cutting arm on this bit to cut a circle of any size that it can reach. My plan is to make holes that are just big enough to slip over the white one inch PVC pipe. I didn't end up needing to do that, but that was my plan. Oh, and by the way, I used to be terrified of this thing grabbing my long hair back when I had really long hair. Now I just worry about my knuckles. I have all my pieces cut and ready. Eight three quarter inch ABS rings, nine or so three inch Sintra discs, nine or so three inch double decker Sintra discs, and nine five eighth inch PVC pipe spacers to hold the Sintra discs at the right place inside the rings. All right. To glue everything together, I stuck a one inch wooden dowel onto a piece of wood. The plan is simple put glue inside of an ABS ring and drop a single layer of Sintra disc into it. The glue will ooze out for the bottom some, but that's unavoidable. I add glue to both sides of a PVC spacer ring and then set it in place. Glue the ABS ring again on the top and just inside. Add a double decker Sintra disc and set it on top, making sure the edges are all the same. And then with a gloved hand, I smear the glue around to help fill in the open grain of the ABS pipe. Then I glue on more one inch PVC 
and this piece is cut to an inch and a half long. That's the exact space I need between the rings on the staff. And I make seven of these just like this. And the eighth one has a three inch piece of PVC pipe because it's going to be the topmost ring. There's a rounded skirt piece on the bottom ring. Now, I could cut it from ABS pipe, but I thought if I cut them from some Sintra, they'd be thinner and look better. I have a poster tube that is smaller than the pipe, and it's just the right amount for the thickness of the Sintra. I carefully heat up my Sintra piece because I don't want to burn the corners. And then I put it on the cardboard tube to form it into the round shape that I want. Sintra has a lower melting point than most plastics, so I can touch it pretty quickly without a glove. And like EVA foam, if there's marks on it from pressing, the heat gun will expand the foam back out and make it smooth again. I sand the edges, because I don't want any sharp corners, and then glue them to the bottom of one of the rings. While I let all this glue set up, I can start on the next section. The third section is the grip where you carry the staff and I guess the power cell. I cut a 13 inch piece of ABS for the power cell and I sand the printed markings off of it. To make the end caps, I use a smaller piece of the same ABS pipe. And I heat up some Sintra plastic with my heat gun. And when it's pretty soft, I set it over the short pipe and then press some one inch PVC into it, holding it in place until it cools. This gives me a short cone shape that both fits the ABS and the PVC. I cut the corners off so they fit the ABS pipe. Do I want to cut it so it goes inside? I would probably have a bigger problem than just doing this. I sand the edges and cut out the middle to fit the one inch PVC. There we go, that's great. On the other end cap, I drill out a one and a half inch hole to fit over the bottom section. That piece will screw together inside of the power cell. I glue on the top end cap first and mark where I want the power cell to stop on the PVC pipe. Here's fine. The plan is to slip the small pipe into the larger one, but I'll need something to hold them steady because I don't want a wobbly melt stick. I cut a set of four rings from floor mat foam to use as a stabilizer inside the ABS pipe. I mark the center of the smaller piece of PVC and then cut it out so it'll fit the pipe. I glue two rings together and add an extra leftover disc of Sintra to the bottom end. And a little hot glue will hold the foam rings on the PVC. I also add some extra support so the rings don't move when I stuff them into the ABS. Because I want to screw each section together, I want a wood core for the staff but a one inch dowel is too small for one inch PVC because it just is, it's annoying. I add some masking tape to make it fit, only in three places, each end in the middle. I drill out both ends of the wooden dowel. On one end, I use a wood insert nut. On the other will be a double-ended screw that has wood threads and machine threads. While putting the wooden dowel inside the PVC, I add some Gorilla Glue. It foams when it sets, so it helps fill in the gap. I should have put the double-ended screw in the wood before I glued it into the pipe, because even with a pilot hole, this was not easy. I do get it screwed in until I can't see the wood threads anymore, and the other end will screw into the bottom of the ring section. I add in a ton of Gorilla Glue to hold that assembly inside the ABS pipe. It's okay if I hit the sides of the ABS, because the other piece, it'll push all the glue down with it. Some PVC cement where the pipe will meet the end cap, and I'm careful to hold the end cap in place so it doesn't pop off while I set the PVC pipe. Then I need to press the whole assembly over some other stuff in order to help get it into place. Then glue the other end cap on. So the very bottom of the melt stick is tapered. It isn't a straight, uh, PVC pipe all the way to the bottom. Well, it's probably not actually PVC pipe, but I'm using one. And so it's not straight all the way to the floor. It actually tapers in the last section. So to do that easily, I just bought a table leg. At some home improvement stores, you can buy project table legs. So I've got a stick that goes a little bit bigger than the PVC pipe, and it tapers down to considerably smaller. So that's what I want. All I'm gonna do so I'm gonna cover this thing in glue so it doesn't look like wood.
Working on the rest of the stick gave the glue on the first pieces time to set. Now I can glue them to a wood core. I start with a bottom skirted piece, gluing it in place. Then I add tape and glue for each additional ring, one at a time, as I work my way back up to the top. There we go. Yeah, that's nice. That works out well. All right. Well, it's not even a bad, uh... yeah, it's heavy, but it'll get heavier in a minute. <laughs> The foam of the ball is fully cured, so I cut the parts off I don't need, and then I add an insert nut. Alrighty. <laughs> Give the glue a chance to set up, and I'll start painting it. I'm pretty happy about that, actually. This is okay. <laughs> a coat of primer, some sanding, and another coat of primer later, and I spray the three sections gold, and the ball is a gloss orange. All the pieces screw together easily, and the table leg just barely fits inside the power cell. All the materials I used to make this project I picked up locally. I put a part list in the description. I have my own melt stick, made to look exactly like it did on set for the movie and in the Daryl Grandmaster short. Now I say exactly like it was on set because in the final film, the melt stick was actually digitally enhanced with additional textures and details. I made mine look like this because I thought I was gonna have a chance to get this into Jeff Goldblum's hands at a local con. Now, Jeff had to cancel at the last minute, so I'm gonna have to wait until the next time he comes around, but that's okay. Maybe we can get Eric C. to add his digital textures to this one. And if he did, then this would be the most accurate melt stick ever, because this is how Odin makes. I mean, it's a, a, a Jeff Goldblum prop. How am I not gonna make this? Because foam uh, finds a way. Now, is it just me? Or is the armor that Topaz is wearing look an awful lot like the HEV suit that Gordon Freeman wears in Half-Life? I want to thank LD5 Cosplay, the NPCs, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.